Let's talk about gravitational acceleration. Suppose a skier is skiing down a slope and that she's speeding up as she goes. Which of these four vectors, A, B, C, or D, best represents the direction of the skier's acceleration at the instant shown? If you chose C, you're correct. Let's see why that has to be. If we look at the skier's velocity vector at any instant in time, it has to be in the direction she's going, down the slope. If we wait for a second, her velocity is still down the slope, but it will have a greater magnitude. She'll be going faster. Remember, the acceleration is, by definition, the change in the velocity vector that happens in one unit of time, in one second. In this case, I would have to add a change vector down the ramp to that initial velocity to turn it into that final velocity. The acceleration vector is always in the same direction as the change in velocity, so C must be the right direction. For those of you who chose direction D, what were you thinking? Well, I'll tell you what you were probably thinking. You were thinking gravity. And if I had asked you to give a magnitude to that acceleration, you might have said 9.8 meters per second every second. I heard this quote from one of my students. A question I have is, could you draw the acceleration vector straight down? Because that's really the direction of the acceleration. Or do I necessarily need to draw it in the direction of the ramp? What this student was saying is, the acceleration's really down because it's really caused by acceleration. This student was taught in a previous class, I assume, that everything has the same acceleration, that everything on planet Earth has acceleration 9.8 meters per second per second, the gravitational acceleration. But that just doesn't make sense. If you're sitting in a chair right now, your velocity is zero. Well, let's wait a second. If you're still in the chair, your velocity is still zero. Your velocity has not changed at all. So your acceleration is zero if you're sitting in a chair. So when does something have this gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second every second? When do I use this value of little g? Well, we can always trust the operational definition. The acceleration will always be the change in the velocity vector that occurs in one second. It just so happens that this definition gives us a value of 9.8 meters per second per second down in the very special case of things falling off the physics building in a vacuum. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a grand piano. It could be your textbook. If it's falling in a vacuum, it is in free fall. And in that special case, it always has the same value of 9.8 meters per second per second down. Now, the first to discover this was the great scientist Galileo. And legend has it that he went to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa with a large rock and a small rock, and he dropped those two rocks at the same time and found that they landed at the same time at the base of the tower. Now, we don't believe that Galileo actually did this experiment because he didn't have to. In his notes, we find a thought experiment where Galileo suggested that if you went to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and if you were to drop three identical stones, well, it's just reasonable to assume that they're all going to fall at the same rate. They're all going to land at the same time. There's no way to distinguish one stone from the other. Galileo then argued that if I moved one of the rocks close to another rock, the proximity shouldn't matter. They're falling at the same rate anyway, it shouldn't bother them that they're next to each other. He then went one step further and said, as long as those two rocks are falling next to each other, why not glue them together? It's not going to hurt. 
at this point the two rocks become one large rock and we have the result that a large rock will fall at the same rate as a small rock and land at the same time. Let's look at this in the context of a sample problem. Suppose you and a friend stand on the edge of a 40 meter cliff. You throw a red ball straight up at 30 meters per second. At the same time you throw the red ball, your friend throws a blue ball straight down the cliff at the same speed, 30 meters per second. Two questions. Which of those balls, the red one or the blue one, is going to be traveling fastest right before they hit the ground at the bottom of the cliff? Second question. How much later does the red ball hit than the blue ball? Well, let's look at this one second at a time. You throw that red ball straight up into the air at 30 meters per second. One second later, how fast is it going? That's what the gravitational acceleration is all about. Every second that goes by, nature takes the vertical velocity of whatever it is you're throwing or whatever is moving and adds 9.8 meters per second down. Now to make the math a little easier, let's round that 9.8 up to 10 meters per second per second, just to give us a better idea of what's going on. Every second that goes by, I add 10 meters per second down. That means one second after the ball is thrown, it will be traveling at 20 meters per second. A second later, I take that 20 meters per second, add 10 meters per second down, and it's only going 10 meters per second. That means that after three seconds of traveling upwards, the ball will stop and turn around. As it falls, each second that goes by, we add 9.8 meters per second, call it 10 meters per second, and so that after four seconds it will be going 10 meters per second down, after five seconds it will be going 20 meters per second down, and after six seconds, it will once again be at the same level that it started at and it will be traveling at the same speed but now downward towards the bottom of the cliff. It will be traveling 30 meters per second down just like your friend's ball. That means when the two balls land right before they land they will each be traveling the same speed. It also means that the red ball will land six seconds after the blue ball.